Good morning to all of you. Welcome to Central City Community Church of the Nazarene. I'm Minister Eugene, and I will be teaching out of the book of Exodus today. I will be the vessel that God uses to bring forth the word out of the book of Exodus, praying that the Holy Spirit is going to be the teacher for all of us. Amen. Amen. So before we get started with anything, let's go to God in prayer. Father, we just come before your throne of grace and mercy this morning. We ask that you forgive us for any sins we committed, knowing, unknown, and deed and thought. Anoint us with your spirit. Let your will be the foundation that we stand on. Let your word be the word that lead and guide us according to your precept and your concept. Anoint us, Father God, with thy spirit. Anoint this house of worship with thy spirit. Allow us to decrease that you may increase. And let your word come forth, doing the things that you call upon it to do. In the name of Jesus, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, we pray. Everybody in agreement can say, Amen. Amen. So we'll be setting out the book of Exodus today, chapter 20. Last time we was here, <coughs> last Thursday, uh, we did, the last thing that we did was, uh, verse 13, which yeah. is the sixth commandment, which means you shall not murder. Yes. And that's what we were the last time that we were here. I'm not the, breaking the rule because I was closing the door because you want to Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, ma'am. Okay. Bible study started. Please don't have no outbreaks. Don't just talk. If you ain't got nothing to say about the study, then please be quiet. If you got something to say about the study, hold your hand up and I'll let you speak. In other words, let's just, let's button it up. So this morning we starting at uh, verse 14, Exodus 20 verse 14, okay. which is the seventh commandment. We went through the first six already. And now we're going through the seventh commandment. The seventh commandment reads <coughs> like this at verse 16. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Huh? Yep. That's no, that's not the seventh what happened commandment. To 14? The seventh commandment is, no, I'm sorry, I read the wrong one. No. Wait a minute. Thou shalt not commit adultery. I'm sorry. <laughs> 14. Thou shalt not commit adultery. What does that mean to anyone? And before you speak, hold your hand up. I will allow you to speak on the issue. Let's start right here. Go ahead. You know, so that when they're married, you know, adultery is regardless if they're married or not. So you don't understand it. Well, okay. You can, come on, Dave. Uh, yeah, um, so we're not supposed to commit physical adultery. You know, if you're married, you're not supposed to be having an extramarital affair. But Israel was also, also accused of committing adultery later on, spiritual adultery. <coughs> having affairs with all the nations oh. around her, worshiping their idols. And getting mixed up in their practices and God told them don't do that and they just blatantly went ahead and just did it anyway <laughs> anyone else 14, Exodus 20. Uh, also, also it uh, says that um, like you said that God did not want us to be physically but also spiritually on the, on, on the part of the being spiritual part, it's kind of hard to explain that one because we're not supposed to have other idols before them, but yes. they did it anyway. That's right. And, and um, sometimes, well, nowadays they don't do the idol thing, but you can make something out of an idol and put, put that before God instead of having you be there for us. That's about idolatry. Yes. But we're talking about adultery. Okay. 
But you have to understand it to it. Right. Come on, Sister. Okay, that's I understand what you're saying, but what you need to understand that if your husband is of the kingdom of God, he's also a king too. Uh huh. Okay, that's true too. Because he because he's the son of God. Yes. Huh? True. And so the Bible says, even in the Bible it tells you that he called them gods, you know, and God is a king. Yes. And his son is a king up under him. Yes. He's the king in heaven, and his son is the king on earth. Okay. So you have to understand that. Okay. Uh, so let's get down to the okay. adultery thing. Okay. Go ahead, Teresa. That's something I commit adultery. Uh, uh, okay, so that's something I commit adultery. It's Church is the bride of Christ. Yes. You hear the three things like yes. that? The okay. church is the bride of Christ. Huh? Yeah. God is married to the backslider. And yeah. God is married to Israel. Backslider, backslider, Old Testament. Yes. Old Testament. 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 But the Old Testament oh, still lives. Yes. Now, I don't uh, think the Old Testament. Don't do the right? yeah, don't, we don't do so the sacrifices. Well, Jesus, had to do with people to Jesus sacrifice. was a sacrifice. And they had to keep making sacrifices to establish their community. Well, but you still got to make a sacrifice that's just not a blood sacrifice. And that's the Old Testament word, too. Yeah. You still make a sacrifice today. It's just not a blood sacrifice. Yeah, right? exactly. See? Right. It's a spiritual sacrifice. That's right. Because the church. Is the bride of Christ. Yeah. So if the church turn away from Christ and start worshiping somebody else, what are they doing? They commit an adultery. Huh? Yes. When Israel turn away from God, they become what they call backsliders. Backsliders is the ones that commit adultery. He's still married to them, but they committed adultery. If you go out and have an extramarital affair with somebody and not your husband or not your wife, you're committing adultery. Yes. Yes. Adultery is simple. You're married, you got a husband, you stay true to that husband. Your husband got a wife, stay true to that wife. If you go and sleep with another man, you commit an adultery. If he ain't going to sleep with another woman, you commit adultery. I'm sorry, sister. That is what called physical adultery. Spiritual adultery is Christ is married to the church. So if the church turned their back on Christ and started worshiping another idol, yeah. they committed adultery. Yeah. Yeah. See? As Israel turned away from God and started worshiping other idols, they committed adultery. Adultery is adultery yes. in Israel. 
Yes, they. It can be yeah, forgiven. well, that's why God told the Israelites before yeah. they even entered the land, you know, when you enter the land, you're supposed to, you, they were supposed to destroy all their pictures, all their idols, and they weren't, to, they weren't to get involved in any of their practices because he knew that they would pick up on the habits of the people around him and just walk away from them, like what started in the book of Judges, you know? I mean, everything started out well when they entered in the land, but it didn't, it didn't last. It just didn't, didn't last. But they didn't do what they were supposed to do. Yeah. I'm sorry, uh, I commit sin too. I got many husbands and the problem is uh, sometimes I've been faithful to God and sometimes I didn't have faithful. But my question is, it is, it is forgiveness, right? Of course there's forgiveness. Jesus Christ, right? Of course there's forgiveness. But you gotta go to God with a sincere heart. You can't go to him and say, Oh Lord, please forgive me, I did this and I did that, but in your heart is not what you mean. A sincere heart is saying that whatever comes from your mouth, mean it. Mean it. Yeah. At one minute you begging for forgiveness and the next minute you're doing the same thing again, you didn't mean it. You didn't mean it. You just talking. You just trying to, you know, cover yourself or save yourself. <laughs> you know, you're trying to get out of uh, being, you know, chastised for certain things. But we have to understand the difference between physical adultery and spiritual adultery. See? And so when we understand that, we understand the position of the church, the position of Israel. I think See? I have to meet You don't confess your sin, just will come out your mouth. It's got to be coming from your heart. You got to mean what you say and say what you mean. If it don't come from your heart, it has no meaning. No meaning. You can go to God with anything. Anything. It say the fervent and righteous prayer. No, the fervent prayer of a righteous man availed his life. The sincere, fervent prayer of a righteous man of God and much. That's what the Bible tells us. That word righteous man means one who is serious about what's coming from his mouth. That word righteous means one who is serious about what's coming from the heart. That word sincere means you mean what you say. Whatever you speak, you're meaning it. It's coming from your mouth. It's not just coming from your mouth, but you're speaking what's into your heart. That's why the Bible says, from the heart the mouth speaks. That's what the Bible tells us. So you mean what you say. So when you start talking to God, you can't tell God no lie, because God is the discerner of the heart. He knows everything that comes out your mouth, whether it's true or false. So you can't just go to God and say, Father, blah, 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 <laughs> tears in your eyes falling down at the same time, but you got a dirty heart. Yeah, it ain't no meaning behind it. <coughs> God don't fall for tears. God know you. God know you. From the longest string hair on your head to the bottom of your feet, God knows you. You know your spirit, everything about you. So when we start talking about adultery, you think about what you're saying. Jesus said this, 
and he allowed Moses to write the, the, the divorce law simply because of the hardness of man's heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In other words, he already know that man couldn't keep that law. You know? I mean, you wouldn't want a woman, but your eyes are not going over there. Huh? There she goes, swaying by you, back and forth, and you like this. And your wife is over here. Yes. At the end, there she goes. She knows what she's doing, and her husband is over there. It happens that way all the time. All the time. I think it doesn't happen to the best of us in here. So don't, you know. And, and so ain't, ain't nothing, ain't nothing, ain't no use to sitting here trying to lie about it, but just give it all to God and be honest about it. You know? And what we do the same thing too. That's what I said. I said, there she go. Did you hear when I said, there she go. Switching it left and right and her husband is over there. But she know you looking for her, so she's still going. It. You know she know you looking. And the woman you know, the same thing to you know as soon as she get uh, uh, close to her husband, 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 then she straight up. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but that's just the way it works. Yeah, well, that's like men and women, they both like that's that. That's like a man being around a bunch of. I mean, exactly. Because I've been around. I've seen men yeah, walking with that. their girl. They girl with their hand around their, their shoulders walking with them and a the girl passing over here and they're like, uh, you know what I'm saying? And I've seen the girl see him looking and she hit it a lot. Like, you know, you know, hey, it is what it is. That's what it is. Huh? What you it is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> and all you, you can't call it nothing else but what it is. See? You can't call a spade a heart. Because a spade is a spade. And a heart is a heart. So it is what it is. And that's just the way it is. Yeah. Don't get married, don't be in relationship. Then you won't have no issues, Amen. So now we understand the seventh commandment, you shall not commit adultery. We're going to go to number eight. And the eighth commandment is you shall not steal. Thou shall not steal. What do that work with? Anybody want to speak against it? Thou shall not steal. It says that when you, we don't give the cards in the opening. <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't see you, you wouldn't steal me. <laughs> okay, well, give me a for the That's right. Like, you know, like, for years, I, used, I mean, I used to be able to pick up with my toes. Okay? Toes, so, I'm right now, right now. Excuse me. Uh, we don't give the tithes and the offerings. Is like, uh, like retaining, no? Like uh, it says, it's like a, if you don't give the tithes and the offering, that's a steal. Well, put it like this. Put it like this. Would you steal too? Hey, Greg, I call you back. I'm in a class right now. Let's go to steal. What it meant if, if don't give to offerings, steal. What you consider that? Well, the Bible say in the book of Malachi, yeah, uh, for people that don't pay their time, say, would a man rob God? Yes. That's what it said in the book of Malachi. Mm -hmm. Say, yes, he will. And when you rob him, what do you rob him of? Tithes and offerings. That's what it said, right? Is robbery still it? Yes, yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. Go ahead, Teresa. Yeah. to 
Manipulation is an act that leads to stealing. Mm -hmm. How's that? It's an act that leads to stealing. Mm -hmm. See, yes, Dave. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think a good example of that is Jim Jones. He, he manipulated all those people, took them to Jonestown, and they all committed suicide. So in a way, yeah. he stole from those people, he stole not only their spiritual life, but their physical life. And he's well, held responsible for that. You know, I, I, when I look at that, I, I call it an act of stupidity on their part. Well, yeah. yeah. My question is, why the did Bible say, hold up, hold up. Don't just talk out. Okay, I'm sorry. You want to speak, hold your hand up. Okay, I'm sorry. I would, I would, you know, a lot of people look at it differently, but I look at it as stupidness on their, on their part. The Bible says, Steady should I suffer approve unto God, a workman need not to be ashamed of rightly dividing the word of truth. That's what the Bible tells you. So if you study God's word, not just read it, anybody can read it, but just reading it don't give you understanding. Jesus said, them that can hear, let them hear. In other words, if you're reading it and you're not reading it in the spirit, you're not going to receive from it because it's a spiritual book. So you have to study it. But before you begin your study, you pray and ask God to give you discernment of his word. So you study it to learn. That means that you're going to pour out your heart into it because you want to know. Right? So if you study God's word and you learn God's word, you'll see through stupidity. Anyone that's trying to misguide you contained to God's word, you see through it all the time. Because why? Because the spirit of discernment is upon you. God is going to show you that this person is playing games with you. See, a lot of times with people, sometimes people know a person is playing game and still follow the game because they think they can get something out of it. They still follow it because they think they're smart enough but they're going to get something out of it. And most of the time they never get anything out of it. Not, any, not nothing that's worthy. 
So when I look at those people that follow Jim Jones, I call them stupid. Because, see, the light is all on Satan. You know, God shines the light on Satan. You open up your mind, your heart. You allow the Holy Spirit to come up on you and in you. You know, Satan can't hide from you. Yeah, yeah. The Bible says that he gives you as his child the power to step on serpents and snakes. Satan is beneath you as a child of God. There's only one above you as a child of God, that's God himself. The Bible says, Father, Son, you are a son of God. Yeah. The Bible says that if you're walking in the spirit, then God calls you his son. Right. So Father, Son, and up under that is what? Angels. Because yeah. the angels protect you. Yeah. And up under the angels is what? The head of the snake. Yeah. Yeah. The head of the snake. Yeah. So you're walking on the snake. All time, when you walking in the spirit, you walking on the head of the snake. He has nothing on you, see, because you're protected by the Holy Spirit. And every week we go back to this. A good example of that is Job. Satan couldn't touch Job when the Holy Spirit had him surrounded with power, God's power. Satan couldn't even get up in there. He couldn't get up in there. Say to him, you consider my servant Job, why should I, Lord? You got him covered with your power. I already know I can't get up in there. That show you that Satan is weak to the God we serve. Compared to him. To, period. God is in control of him. Satan do nothing unless God allows him. So to Two, not comparative? Two, T O, huh? not T O O. Satan was created, God's the creator. God is the creator. Yes, Satan was created, so God's the creator. Compared to us, he's a powerful. He's still weak up under you. The Bible say you are sons of God. If you're a son of God, then what? Where is it? The Bible say you got the power to I just told them that. To step on what? Huh? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. I, I, I don't yeah. think like that. We have authority. Yeah. That's right. We have authority. If we allow God's power to work. Men had the authority. But you gave your authority to Satan. Oh. Uh huh? Yeah. You yeah. gave it to Satan, didn't we? Uh -huh. In the garden, huh? We took it back uh -huh. and we got Satan. Adam gave it to him, right? Yes. Jesus died on the cross. The Spirit of Christ descended to hell, took the power back. He ascended. Mm -hmm. Came back in the body, took the Bible, the body of Jesus. He ascended to heaven and sit that body on the right hand of God. Thank you. Huh? Amen. Then he said to the disciples out there and told me, he said, What? What I say yesterday. All power in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore, teaching all that I have taught you, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And lo, I will be right there with you always. Huh? Amen. Jesus took that power back. Amen. And Jesus said, every time you call on my name, that power comes up on you. Amen. It's on you. It comes in you. Every day, walking in that spirit of righteousness, you have that power. Satan gets thee behind me. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Bo, bo, bo. Step on in. Against the hell shall not prevail against us. That's right. Shall not. Shall not. So we got to remember that. Remember that. Satan has a mission. Satan, huh? Oh, he. Satan has a mission. He comes to steal, <coughs> kill, and destroy. Right? Yes. But only if you look towards him. We have a mission. Only if you look towards him. If you look the other way, Jesus said this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Huh? We walk on, we'll walk on Satan. 
Yeah. We'll walk on sin. He said, pick up your cross and follow me. That's what Jesus said. He said, bear your own burdens because I'm going to give you the power to carry that cross that you have on your shoulder. So you pick that cross up and you follow me. Right? He said, I laid the foundation. I left the footprints for you to step in. All you got to do is pick up that cross. Carry your own cross. Huh? But I'm giving you the power to overcome the burdens of your cross coming to you. I'm in a class right now. I'll call you back. And so these are the things we have to, you know, truly understand. You have to understand your position and your condition in Christ Jesus. See, when you understand who you are mm -hmm. in Christ Jesus, ah. and if you believe it in your heart mm -hmm. and speak it from your mm -hmm. mouth continuously, mm -hmm. you don't have nothing to worry about. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that somebody mm -hmm. couldn't shoot and kill you? No. no. Mm -hmm. They can shoot and kill you, they can kill a body, but they can't kill that spirit, huh? Because right there where Christ is at, you're going right there beside it. Huh? Learn to hold your hand up. Hold your hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Excuse me, and then, okay, go ahead. Now speak. I, I don't know exactly how it says in English, but it says, No tengas miedo del que mata el cuerpo, sino el alma y el que quiere llevarte al infierno. Don't be afraid for the one that kills the flesh, the body, or, but be afraid yeah, for the one yeah, yeah. that kills the spirit and wants to take you to the lake of fire. Do not fear the one that kills the body, but the one that kills the spirit. That's the one who wants to take you to the lake of fire. That means, no. well, that means no, be afraid spirit. of Satan, you, you, don't you, be, I mean, don't, don't listen to him. Okay, yeah. listen. Okay, I got you. I got you. I'm afraid, but don't listen to him. There's only one that can kill your spirit. Satan can't kill your spirit. But he can kill the body. Jesus can kill body and spirit. Jesus can kill anything one kill. <laughs> but Jesus, but Jesus didn't come to kill, see. Jesus came, he said, I came to give you life and life abundantly. He didn't come to kill nothing. He come to give you life. See, only Satan come to kill. See? Kill the works of the devil. That's the works of the devil. To kill, steal, and destroy. Ain't that what I just said? That's the works of the devil. The devil come to kill, steal, and destroy. You know what I'm saying? He tried to take everything away from God that he can. But he has no power over you. That's the problem. When you turn your life over to Jesus Christ, he has no power. Amen. None. Amen. His power is null and void. It's gone out the door. There's nothing he can do to you. Mm. You're covered by the blood of Jesus. Mm. Power of God. Through the blood of the light. That's right. Yes. See? And so you don't have to worry about that. When you understand what it is, when you understand what Satan is trying to do, and when you understand who you are, mm. you don't worry about Satan. Mm -hmm. I don't care where you at. You can walk these streets day and night, whatever. You don't worry about Satan. You have to respect him. Huh? You have a healthy respect for the I don't have no respect for Satan. I don't have no respect for Satan. There's power in it? I don't have no respect for Satan. You know? You wanted to say something? Yeah, I was just going to say that uh, if you walk with the light and you walk with God in your heart and you walk with the heart and you understand the truth. Wait a minute. She's talking. I wanted to hear you. That's why I stopped you. I want to hear what you're saying, okay? Amen. And that's why I say, hey, go ahead on, say. The, uh, you have the light. You have the light in your eyes. And you have the light in, um, for, for God's love in your heart. So when you know you have God uh, around you, you walk with the, with the full armor, with the faith. 
Come on, girl. That's right. Of God. It takes a lot for you to have that confidence level to feel it within yourself. But once you feel it and you have it, um, Satan can take it away from you. And no, he can't. It's through your protection level over yourself. And then when you feel like something is around you that's not right, that's Satanish or that's trying to destroy you or, or, or basically uh, miss interpret who you truly are, like you said, your identity, then um, you'll feel it, and God will present it right back, and, it, and the more you, the more he refreshes you, the more you'll understand it more and more, but it has to take you to take that stand in order for you to do it. Amen. 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 Now, what you wanted to say? Uh, can you read it? Read Revelation 1 and 2, please? Read what? Well. Revelation 118. Why do you want me to read Revelation 118? Because I'm in, 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 in uh, Exodus. And you want me to go all the way to life. Revelation. Over life and death. Revelation 118 is talking about Jesus Christ's authority. Hey. All the lives, all the lives. I haven't yeah, got to the book of Revelation yet. Revelation 118. That's Jesus. What it says. Uh, I am he that lived and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Yeah, that's what I said. That he took the keys back. And now he had power. Jesus Christ, right? He had power over life and Amen. death. That's right. See? He has all, he's in control Jesus of all Christ is in control. He's in, he's okay. in control of all judgment. Oh, what? All judgment has been committed to the Son too. Well, I think that is included in life and death power. He said, I got all power, all power, all power. Remember that, you see. You see, when God formed Adam, he made him in his image and his likeness. Mm -hmm. And he gave him dominion. The dominion that God gave Adam was the power over the kingdom that he made him the king over. See, God made Adam a king. Huh? He gave him dominion. See, God said, I created heaven, I created earth. Right? He took a little bit of heaven and brought it down. Uh, he said, heaven is my home and earth is my what? Footstool, right? Huh? And his footstool is where his sons live. Yes. See? And that was the kingdom that God designed for man. Yes. They didn't know nothing outside of the walls of paradise. Yes. They didn't know yes. nothing. No. He was inside of the walls of paradise. Yes. See? He named every animal. Yes. See? And even the woman that was made to him, and after she was made, she said, blood of my blood, right? Huh? Yes. Flesh in my flesh. Yes, huh? You shall be called woe man. Woe me coming from within me. Woe man. You are a man that came from me. Huh? That's what he's saying. So she was a king too. So when the words say, hey, his son, son does not mean just a man. It means male or female. They was both kings. Amen. But him being the firstborn was the head. Yes. That make a difference. Yes. He was the head. See? And that's why when she listened to the stupidity of Satan, nothing happened. Sorry. Nothing happened. See? But as soon as he bit into it, what happened? Everything failed. Every, yep. Yeah. Everything Their eyes are open and Everything. things change forever. Oh, Their yeah. eyes was already open. Not yet. Their eyes was open, yeah, but it too. wasn't open to evilness. Yeah. Yeah. It was open to righteousness. Yeah. Because yeah. God is a righteous God. He made you in his image. Adam was holy and pure. Yes. Adam had no sin in him, no sin around him. He was designed in a place where sin did not live. 
So he had no sin. Mm -hmm. See? That's right. So when they say his eyes was open, that's a figure of speech that said, you know, his eyes was exposed to sin. Not that his eye, he was blind. He wasn't blind. He was walking with God all the time in the cool of the night. He wasn't blind. But he did not know sin. So his eyes is open means he was exposed to sin. He allowed himself to be exposed to sin through what? Christ. No. I mean not Christ. Uh, through he what? Listen to his wife. <laughs> through what? <laughs> through what? By eating that apple. Through sin. Through sin. That's all you had to say. He was exposed to sin through sin. What was his sin? Disobedient. Listening to his wife. That's right. <laughs> but man is looked upon as a tree. Yeah. In the word of God. Right? Looked upon as a tree. Man is looked upon as a tree that bears his own seed. Adam thought about it. Why uh, would have died and God would think about right? that. See? <laughs> what it was, he listened to the voice of Satan. Yeah. And when he acknowledged the voice of Satan, he sinned against God. Exactly. God did not want you to acknowledge the voice of Satan. He said, I give you power over snakes and serpents and things. Right today, through Jesus Christ, you got that power again. So he's telling you, man, don't pay no attention to Satan. There's no life in Satan. Amen. Amen. Satan brings the only habit, death. There's no life in Satan, period. Yeah. See? That's why Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. <laughs> to show you, I am the resurrection and the life. Huh? So there's no life through nobody but Jesus Christ. Amen. Satan don't want to give you life. Satan want to take your life. Yes. Yes, he does. And, do it in and that's what he tried to do with the first man that God created and yes. woman. Yes. But see, God already had a plan of salvation in place in case man falls. <laughs> he was made perfect, but he still had Freedom to make a decision. See? Excuse me. Yes. Like he's gonna be chained for one thousand years. No. When the new Jerusalem home will come here, he will be alone, chained. Okay, for but we. Uh, okay, but no we, hold, it, hold it, hold it, hold it. We're not in the book of Revelations. Let's no, stay no, out no, of Revelation. Because you will have no, no friends for that, for that one thousand years. Man. And no one to tell that. So anyway, I hope I hope you guys got an understanding today out of out of, out of this yes. that, that yes. we're talking. because this is what you call a teaching ministry, and this is where everybody you can come in, you can sit, you can voice your opinion, you know, because I want to hear whatever you have to say. If you've been studying God's word, it might be something you're gonna say that's gonna help me. You see what I'm saying? I tell everybody when they come in, I'm not the teacher. God put me here, but he didn't put me here as the teacher. See? He put me here to learn. I'm a student just like you. See? The Holy Spirit is the one that do the teaching. Now, if he come through me and do it, thank God for that. Okay? But what comes through you if you really, really study God's word, if you seek in righteousness, the Holy Spirit also works through you. So that's why God give me an ear. He said, if you can hear, let him hear. So when y'all speak, I listen. See? That's why I told you I wanted to hear everything you said. And everybody in here that already know me, they know I want to hear what people have to say. Because somebody in here can give us an insight that God may not have given me. And if, it, if they do, then it's a fact. It's in the Bible, it's a fact. 
Have I read the Bible? Yes. Do I make mistakes? Yes, I do. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I do. And sometimes some people correct them. You know? Yesterday we had a debate and he came up with a great thing yesterday, a word from God showing us something in the Bible pertaining to our discussion yesterday. And as I read it, I said, oh my God, it's right there. And it came out. And I let everybody know that what he said is a fact. Because it's in the Word. It's in the Word. See? And so that's why I say study to show yourself the truth. You got to read it. You got to get an understanding. You got to let the Holy Spirit lead you. You have to. Because he's the only one who can lead you to the truth. Mm -hmm. Satan don't want you to know the truth. Satan wants you to live a lie every day. Amen. See? Yes, and so yeah. we have to understand that. We have to understand that. So today we stop that verse 15 uh, of Exodus 20. Uh, you shall not steal or thou shall not steal. And that's how the conversation got started. And so we have, that was uh, the eighth commandment, which means next week, if God give us life and death, uh, give us life, not death, let me correct that. And we are here, we'll start at uh, 16. 16, which will be, and to give it to you where you can study to think about it, the ninth commandment, you shall not bear false witness. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Just put that in your heart. Read your Bible. Read it. Study it. You know, get some insight on it. Get it up in here. So when we come in here, you got something to say. And I got something to hear. You know? I don't want to just be the speaker. I want to hear from everybody. Study to show thyself approved unto God. You know? And Wednesday we'll be uh, back in the book of Matthews on Wednesday. Yes, my sister. What is your name, sir? Lawrence. Lawrence? I thank you because you have a lot of insight. You have a lot of You bring a lot to the table. You do? You really do. You know, and, 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 I, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes, he do. Yes, he do. And he studies. Yes. See, and me and him is always in conversation when we're in here. Yes. And you can see someone that truly studied. And I told him, you know, that I could see you study. And I love for people to study. You know what I'm saying? Because iron sharp and iron. Yes. You know? And so that's why I want all of y'all to study. You know, get God's word inside of you. You know, go, believe it or not, you've got a lot to say. Hey, brother, can you read, please? No, I'm, read, no, I'm not going to read nothing else. Okay. We're getting ready to pray out, okay. and we'll be out of here. Another person that studies real well is Dave. Dave studies all the time. Y'all can believe that. But he's an Old Testament guy. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. He's not just a, he's not, he know a little bit about New Testament, but he's hey. He's strictly yeah, Old, Old Testament. Old Testament. <laughs> you know, he, he getting into Israel and the Jew. Okay. So if you want to know anything about Israel and the Jew, talk to Dave. Dave, all okay. I mean, I understand it, but, you know, Dave, he, he's on top of it. Yeah. And so Dave is here on, on Fridays at 10 o'clock, right? Yeah, Fridays at and 10. And Monday at no, 6. No, Tuesday, Tuesday at 6. Tuesday at 6, six. in the evening. Yeah. He's here Tuesday at 6 in the evening. Friday 10, and he's teaching Old Testament. So if you want to know the Old Testament, y'all come up here and be with Dave. Because Dave, I'm going to tell you something. He know the Old Testament. You know, that's his, that's like his baby. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> he stay in the Old Testament, you know. And so, but there's nothing wrong with that. You know, me, myself, I learned the Old and the New and try to combine them both. That's what I do. Because they are combined. You know, we went from the old to the new. But if you want to know how to get through the old, come and study with Dave. You want to get to the new, 
come in here and we'll study together in here. And we'll get to we'll get, it. We'll get David in the Testament eventually. Huh? We'll get David in the Testament. Well, eventually. David know a little bit about the New Testament, but it's, it's not where he focused himself. You know? Well, God it's, was in the New Testament, that's the problem. Huh? God is God in the Old the Testament, Testament, too. Well, well the, the, Jesus the, is in the New Testament. Wait a minute. Jesus is in the Jesus Old Testament. Jesus is in the Old Testament, right, too. You're right. You're right. See? Jesus, wait a minute. Jesus, let's see who Jesus is. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's yep. Genesis 1-1. One, 1-1, one. One, one, yep. In the beginning yeah. was the Word, uh -huh. and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's John 1-1. One, 1-1. One. One, one. Uh -huh. But the incarnate, the incarnate Jesus Christ is in the New Testament. No, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Jesus. That could be true. That could, well, don't, don't, don't debate that because see, Jesus in the Old Testament was in the spirit and was the word of God. And every time God spoke, things happened. Yep. You see what yep. I'm saying? Yep. You know, because in John 1, 2, it say all things were made, as you go on and say everything was made by him and there was nothing that was made that wasn't made. For him. See. But Jesus also did show up in a pre incarnate state many times in the Old Testament. Yeah, but he, to a degree. Yeah. He but that's pre incarnation. Yeah. See? In the New Testament, he came all the way alive there. Right. Yeah. See? Yeah. See? The New Testament is Jesus in the Spirit. All the way through it. The Old Testament, I mean. That's what yeah. It's Jesus in spirit. You need to focus right? on him in the flesh to get saved. But in the New Testament, it's Jesus in the flesh. Yeah, yeah. The spirit is living in the flesh. This is where he put the body suit on. You know? And he put the body suit on for one reason. Or two reasons. To fulfill the law and the prophecy, right? Yes. Huh? Yes. Fulfill the law and the prophecy. That was part of the law and part of the prophecy. Yes. Well, yes, they. And, and also, too, you, he had to take a body because you can't crucify a spirit. You can't crucify a spirit. And people we are going to pray. And people can't see a spirit, so he had to take on a body of flesh so he could do that one thing, tabernacle. Amen. Amongst tabernacle. his people. That's what it means when it says that he came amongst his own. It's time. He tabernacled. Like the tabernacle was in the midst of the camp in the Old Testament. Well, that's why Jesus came. Well, how was he tabernacling with us now? He, he, you're filled with the Spirit. He gives you the, the tabernacle Holy is Spirit. with you now. You the tabernacle. You are the temple you, of God. You are the temple. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's you're the temple that's of that's God. That's yeah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. How is the tabernacle with us in the in the in the, uh, in the kingdom? In the kingdom? Well, you know, uh, the tabernacle in the kingdom is the holy of holy. His presence. There will be. Presence. Be a, and that is in the presence of the Holy of Holies, ain't it? Thank you. There will be a tabernacle in the millennium. I am a minister here. The senior pastor is Pastor Tony Stallworth. Yeah. That is the senior pastor. But I am a minister at this church. You, so you can invite these people and say, come and see the miracles of Jesus Christ. Uh, really? <laughs> I mean, no, why do I have to? Know, they, wait a minute. Why, let, me, let me ask you a question. Why do I have to invite people to see the miracles of Christ? In, even if, if your eyes are open right now, you already see them. You see, is it daylight no, outside? People, let me people. ask you. Is it daylight outside? Amen. That's a miracle of God right there. Amen. When it turns night outside, that's a miracle of God. Yeah. When the sun sit up in the sky, that's a miracle of God. When the moon come up at night, that's a miracle of God. The star, a miracle of God. Guess what? You being here today to talk to me is a miracle of God. So if you want to see miracles, I don't have to show them to you. God shows them to you every day. You just don't recognize that they're miracles. 
Amen. Amen. Let's close in prayer. Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for each and every person that's here. We thank you for the word, Father God, and the things that came through them, Father God. We ask, O oh Lord, that you continue to anoint us with your spirit. As we leave here today, put a hedge of protection around us. Hold on to us, O oh Lord. Teach and guide us according to your precepts, according to your counsel. Let your word be our foundation in our heart, mind, and soul. Oh, Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, we pray. Everybody in agreement with this prayer can say, Amen. Amen. So you guys, I'll be here Sunday morning at 8 o'clock.